Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial on how to create a copy to clipboard button on your Bubble app. Uh, these are the results we're aiming for. You're gonna have a copy icon or button, you copy and then yeah, your text is copied. And the first thing we need to make sure of is that in your settings, inside the general tab, you check the box that is called expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. So this is super important. You need to make sure that that box is checked before you get started. Once this is done, you're going to need to install a plugin, which is called Toolbox, um, and make sure to install the latest version. So yeah, you can just start typing. I think it's always on the front page, but yeah, it's this one there. So make sure you have it installed. It allows us to run some JS scripts on top of our Bubble app. Then on the page where we're going to have the option to copy to the clipboard, you're going to have a text element and you're going to have your icon or it can be a button or whatever you want. For your text elements, we're going to add an ID attribute. This ID attribute here, I'm calling it copy text, but you can call it whatever you like. Uh, make sure that it makes sense based on the text that is copied. I also put an input element there because it's easier for testing if you want to copy and paste quickly. Yeah, that's always cool. Okay, so we've got our text element with a unique ID that we added there, copy text, the, um, the copy icon, and now we're gonna edit the workflows when this icon is clicked. So the only thing we're gonna need to do is to run some JS script. And this action is created by the plugin, the toolbox plugin that we just installed. So it's this one that you need to use. And from there, we're going to have this very, very simple script and I'm going to add it in the YouTube uh, video description below. So it's easier for you. And it's basically two lines uh, here. You don't need to add any parameters. Uh, you can check asynchronous. And the only thing you have to do is to replace this by the element ID that you chose previously. Uh, here I'm using copy text, but make sure that you're using the actual element ID. Um, what we're doing is basically retrieving the element and then getting the text content that is inside. And then there's just this function that basically copies to clipboard. Um, let's test it out first. I'm copying. Yeah. Okay. All good. Successfully copied. So if you want your users browsers to handle the errors and the information messages, you can also append a little bit more scripts there. So just remove the semicolon and then paste this part also in the video description below. By that, we're going to have some more information. So I'm using Arc as a browser and these are the messages I'm getting. And it's also going to handle the errors if there is one. So it's going to show in your user's console. Okay, there is one more thing that I want to mention. If you're using a repeating group and you have several rows of things, uh, it means that you cannot define a specific ID for each element. So it's always going to be the same, which means that when I'm going to use that copy button on the third row, I'm going to still copy the value from this element because they're all going to have the same ID. Uh, there are two ways to work around this. Either you can create a script on page load that will assign unique IDs to each of your elements that are displayed on that repeating group. And therefore you can use different workflows for each different ID or a little bit of an easier way that I found or a little bit easier workaround is instead of just pulling the data from the ID of the HTML elements, we're just going to give it the text that we want to copy. And since it's dynamic, it's going to change every time. So you can use the cells thing, the cells content, the cells, whatever. So here I'm using it here. And it means that every time the button is going to be clicked, the value here is going to change. So I'm copying the actual data I need. Yeah, that was it for this tutorial. I hope it's clear enough. Please let me know if you have further questions. I'm always happy to help and make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.